Well, hello everyone, and um, thank you for your, all of your time for Mike's um, detailed presentation. Um, you know, it's fantastic that we have someone like Mike on the team who's had so many years experience um, in, in the study abroad industry. So yeah, I hope um, you certainly got a lot out of that and we will definitely share that PPT with you um, very, very, very soon. Um, so, so today, um, yeah, a few of you have asked about uh, school sector. So um, usually I'm the one in charge for, for schools. So it's good to see a lot of agents here today from Vietnam, from Malaysia, um, from, from all over, and even some from China as well. So um, these are particularly strong markets for, for study abroad for, for schools. It's good to see some, uh, some agents from South Asia too which traditionally not so um, big for high school market, but in the future, um, it's definitely, uh, definitely a lot of um, analysts have predicted that it will become um, popular very soon. So today I'm gonna start off um, with um, the schools and in particular New South Wales government schools, which is uh, public schools uh, which, from, from New South Wales, of course. So you'll know in Australia, we have six states, and two territories. So each state is responsible uh, for their own uh, schools. Um, it's state funded. Uh, and also each state is responsible for the recruitment of international students. So each have their own marketing team, their own admissions, uh, their own requirements. Um, so, but I have to say um, a lot of uh, the schools do run it quite similar um, to one another. Yes, there are some differences which I'll can go over, um, but I'm just going to use an example today uh, for New South Wales government schools because going over each of this, the state schools department will take a long time, which we don't have. So, and you know, in, in our spare time, you can get in touch with me directly if you if you do have questions on that. So, I will first start off with New South Wales government schools. I'll go through some um, differences, uh, and I'll go through private schools as well. Uh, it's important to touch on some of the private schools, which are some of you um, migration agents have touched on as well. There are some major differences there, uh, in particular fees and coursework, um, which I will go over as well. Um, I'm conscious of, conscious of the time, so I'll go through as quickly as possible. And please, if you have any questions, um, do let me know. So we'll start off uh, with uh, New South Wales Government Schools. Um, of course, uh, so this is the map of Australia. New South Wales is the most populous state in Australia. Um, second is Victoria, third is Queensland. So these three states are the most popular um, states to study in Australia. Um, they're the economic uh, lifeblood of the country. The, the population is, is strong there and they have, have a large diaspora of uh, people from overseas, uh, particularly from East Asia, Southeast Asia, and beyond. So naturally, a lot of people would like to go study in these states. Uh, and we talk about New South Wales right now. So why, why study in Australia and why Sydney? These are the questions that you as agents are going to get. Um, and as migration agents, you'll know fully well um, the high standards that Australia lives by. So of course, high standard of living, the multicultural city, um, Sydney is, is a big population, it's around 5 million people, but yet it's quite relaxed. Uh, it's quite safe as well, and there's a really high level of education between all of the state schools. They have to live by a certain standard, and the, the state is responsible for uplifting and maintaining this standard um, for everybody. I don't think I have to say that uh, Australia is an English-speaking uh, native country, um, so, of course, it's a great place to, to study and pick up your English. I mentioned the, how multicultural now New South Wales is. There's huge populations of people from China, uh, Malaysia, India, Nepal, uh, Vietnam, many, many countries from around the world, um, more than 200 uh, different countries and regions around the world call Australia home now. So this is important. Uh, this is the Australian education system. Um, you may not be familiar with this, so it's good to get um, familiar with this part. So in Australia, we have 13 years of curriculum for primary school and high school, 13 years. Just like 
uh, most other systems around the world, but the naming um, is a little bit different. Um, and each state in Australia has different names as well, which I'll, which I'll get to, but this is specific for New South Wales. So New South Wales, the first year that you begin is kindergarten. Kindergarten is usually the year um, you begin when you turn five. So when I was turning five uh, in 1997, I started kindergarten in Sydney, and then I progressed on from there. And I started off, of course, in primary school. Primary school uh, goes for seven years. Um, after that, uh, you then move on to high school uh, in New South Wales. And it's uh, yeah, usually called high school uh, in New South Wales. Other states might call it secondary school. Um, other states might call it um, a state high school. Um, but that's um, yeah, not, not too much to worry about that. They're usually all the same with year seven to year 12. Um, most, uh, most states are, are like that. Um, some schools may uh, separate between uh, year seven and year eight, like a junior school and then a senior high school. So they might have year seven to year nine in their junior high school and then year 10 to year 12 in their secondary uh, senior high school, uh, which does happen. But most of the time, year, uh, high school is between year seven to year 12. Um, then after that, then you go on to, which Mike explained, um, there's of course bachelor degree and I won't uh, get into details of that. Year, uh, um, year 12 is quite a unique um, year in Australia. Um, it's short, it's only three terms. Um, each year is usually split up into four terms. In the Australian system, because it's summer, uh, well, the, the, because it's in the, su uh, the Southern Hemisphere, um, we start our year differently. So our year um, begins in January and it ends in December. Uh, and then there's a summer break um, between this, uh, early December and late January, giving students about six to eight weeks of holiday. Uh, and in between there's holidays. So this term one is usually from January to April. Um, then there's another term from April uh, to July, and then from July to October, October to December. That's how it's usually split up. In between the terms, there's usually a two week holiday break. So the good news is uh, there's four intakes. Um, that's the flexibility that Australia gives. Um, you can, um, with, with some exceptions, um, but most of the time, you can enter uh, and start your school as an international student um, in any of those terms. So it gives us international students a lot of flexibility um, to start their uh, education in, in Australia. So back to New South Wales government schools. Um, it has over 2,200 schools in New South Wales, of which uh, 300 uh, international schools um, can uh, accept uh, students, just checking. Yeah. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, okay, I think so, yeah, that's good. Yes, so um, 300 schools in New South Wales can accept international students. Um, and from there, um, there's over um, 765 students at these uh, schools across New South Wales, so quite, quite many. What they pride themselves on is the high academic excellence, uh, the high teaching standards, um, the personalized care, the world-class facilities, and most importantly, I will say, is the pathway to university and uh, higher education. These are great um, places to go if you're wanting to guarantee your students' future in university and beyond. And of course, looking and ultimately finding a job as well. Um, New South Wales government schools have a very high succession rate uh, into universities, uh, into the group of eight universities, um, into pretty much any university in Australia. So New South Wales government schools are very proud of that. Um, they certainly equip uh, their stu international students well enough uh, to then get into university. So all of the parents that you will deal with, uh, migration agents or education agents, you will all get these questions. They will, you will ask you, say, can my son get into university after going to New South Wales government schools? You can say yes, they will. They have to work hard. The, the schools will give them every resource they have to ensure um, that they move on uh, and do well in university. Uh, yeah, so they're quite, uh, the schools, uh, we're gonna talk about the campus now. Uh, they're quite modern. Um, they've got 
uh, flexible learning spaces. Some of the schools don't go by the traditional method, by the classroom kind of uh, setup. Uh, a lot of them have, you know, couches. Uh, a lot of them, are in particular, the, the libraries, the breakout rooms, are quite relaxed. They want students to feel comfortable. They want students to think creatively. So this is what um, they kind of do to ensure that um, students are um, becoming leaders, are great thinkers, thinking critically, um, and collaborating with each other. So they're coming up with the best uh, kind of resources. They're coming up with the best uh, campuses to ensure students have uh, every opportunity uh, to do well. And of course, use the, the latest uh, technology to, to do that. So schools as well um, in Australia, uh, I would say the main difference um, between uh, the Western education and the, uh, the Eastern education uh, would be the focus on critical thinking, uh, problem solving skills, uh, leadership skills is a big one. I remember when I was in school, we got taught, taught a lot about how to become a leader, um, putting into scenarios that help students um, take control, take the lead. Um, of course, everyone needs that opportunity um, to really learn to think on them on their feet and to be able to delegate uh, and to um, you know set out some tasks for your for your team. Of course, in the end, if um, we're going to be successful in life, we have to know how to um, control and manage people. Uh, so becoming a leader is definitely a part of that. And I think, in my opinion, that schools do a very good job. At that. That's for sure. Um, another one is self-confidence. Um, I think um, a lot, uh, it's, it's kind of maybe in the East, um, it's quite not, maybe not as valued as much. I think giving students more confidence uh, in the classroom can definitely set students apart um, beyond the classroom and in the future. Um, they certainly, um, you know, with confidence, we're able to aim high, we're able to um, dream, we're able to think big, um, we're able to try our hardest um, and move forward to where we want to go um, in life. So I definitely think if, if parents are asking you about, you know, the benefits of studying in Australia, please mention these skills. These are really important skills that I think you definitely do pick up when you're in Australia, particularly, as I said, the leadership skills and the self-confidence um, that you pick up. They really do help nurture the students well there. Um, Mike uh, mentioned before about STEAM. Um, yes, uh, even in high school, they focus on STEM or STEAM. Uh, they go into science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and arts as well. They should, I should, in this PowerPoint, should, should have mentioned arts as well. Um, that's definitely a big focus for all of the schools. They want to, um, they're looking to the future um, and they're, they're looking to create um, the latest uh, and more in, um, innovative um, and tech savvy students. Um, when, I was, uh, when I was in school as well, um, they probably didn't focus on it that much, but I must say uh, in the last um, five to 10 years or so, they have been working very, very hard uh, equipping all of the students with classes like robotics, uh, engineering, IT, um, design and technology. These are all classes that um, I really didn't do when I, was, uh, when I was in school, when I was in the public school system um, in, in Australia. So it's good to see now that there's a really um, big focus. And I know a lot of uh, Asian, Asian schools do have this focus as well. So this is probably something that's um, not too different, but um, you can be assured that in Australia, they are learning these, um, these specialities as well, which is of course very important. Um, another thing as well, um, are the global opportunities that our students have in class. A lot of the schools as well will have programs um, or camps um, or opportunities to go abroad um, for two weeks. I remember at school, um, there was an opportunity for um, a couple of weeks um, study abroad uh, in Pacific countries or in Asia um, to, uh, it might've been um, for, um, might've been for um, giving opportunities for impoverished students um, in um, could be in the Pacific Islands um, or in Southeast Asia. So kind of like humanitarian camps, um, they seem to have a lot of um, these. Um, there's also uh, some, some tours to the US or, or Europe as well. So there's a lot, of, um, exchanges pro a lot of exchange programs that they have as well to allow students to get to know more about um, the world as well. There are extra fees associated with that. Um, but as well, inside the class, there are extracurricular activities 
um, you know, learning more about global communication skills, problem solving, uh, and other languages as well. I must say Australia, for its isolation, uh, it does do well uh, with uh, teaching students um, other, other languages other than English, uh, in particular, um, Japanese, Indonesian, Chinese, um, kind of a lot of focus on Asian language studies uh, as well, and of course the traditional European languages like French, Spanish, they were always a feature of schools as well. So a lot of, all the schools have um, languages other than English um, on offer as, as well. So here are just some photos of uh, some of the classrooms, um, some of the technology um, that they have. Here are some of the key learning areas. So um, in Australia, you can expect, of course, English. That is the sole compulsory uh, subject that you must do at the end of year 12. You must do English. Um, whether you're a native speaker or a secondary speaker of English, you must do this. Um, then uh, mathematics is, of course, a popular course. Every, I did that all the way up to year 12. Most students you'll find do that up to year 12. But surprisingly, it's not compulsory. Um, by, by year 10, you can drop mathematics in favor of other subjects. Um, so there's, uh, there's also science, and in particular, physics, chemistry, biology, environmental science, um, Human society and its environment is quite a unique one for Australia. Um, that includes uh, history, geography, economics, legal studies, business studies. So quite interesting courses there. Um, then there's uh, languages other than English, which I've, uh, which I've described. Then there's uh, IT, creative arts, um, personal development and health, which is another, which is a pseudonym for sport. Um, sport is very important in Australia. Um, and that's one of the top, um, courses. You, you do a lot of practical work outside, which I find very um, enriching, very important for, for students. Um, you learn a lot, learn to play a lot of different sports and learn the, the benefits of teamwork um, that go into sports as well. I think that's one of the best things about sport. You really learn how to work with each other. Performing arts is also very important in schools in Australia. So if your students are, um, I'm sure students in Asia uh, do pick up um, uh, instruments or creative arts. So that's they're, they're all opportunities that you can continue on in Australia as well. Um, sport, I mentioned, very popular in Australia, very strong. Uh, visual and creative arts, so dance, acting, uh, painting, these kind of subjects are all very um, rich uh, and uh, you know, full of great teachers in, in Australia as well. Talked a bit about the resources before, so I'll go over this, but here are some of the, um, in detail, some of the other resources. You know, even some schools have uh, laboratories, hospitality uh, kitchens. Me and Mike, we went to uh, a couple of public schools in Northern Queensland in Townsville, and we were very impressed with how the state system had some really good facilities there. Uh, even, you know, fantastic kitchens, sporting equipment, uh, laboratories. So, you know, you'll find that across the board, states um, schools are very well equipped. Student support. Uh, this is another one that um, parents often ask. Uh, they'll ask what kind of support will they get, um, in particular when students get into trouble. Um, maybe they're having some mental struggles. Uh, maybe they're having some confidence struggles. Maybe they're thinking about their future. Uh, and their progression onto university. And I think uh, schools do a very, very, very good job uh, with coordinating and helping students um, um, with, it, with, with support and assistance and really get them back into the right state of mind, um, helping them with any personal problems. A lot of the counselors were international students as well. Um, a lot of the, uh, the counselors will be um, yes, from Chinese background, Indian background, uh, Vietnamese background. So they will help um, students with their native language as well, um, which I think is most important. I know if I was studying overseas, um, I'd want to, if I had a problem, I know I'm, I myself would want to get the assistance from someone in my native uh, language as well. So schools do a very good job with this. This is absolutely fantastic. And students should be given every assurance that they'll, they'll be well looked after. I um, think I'm going to go through this right now, um, but um, yeah, schools, international students um, perform very, very well in Australia. Um, some international students even score the highest grade um, for, their, uh, for their HSC. Now, the HSC is the curriculum in New South Wales. Australia is quite unique in that 
the curriculum, there's no national curriculum. Um, there is a curriculum each state. As I said before, the, the states are responsible for funding and the allocation of resources for education in Australia. So um, they are responsible for that. And therefore, they, each state has a different curriculum. Um, New South Wales being, H it's called HSC, uh, which is short for the Higher School Certificate. And the, what you get is when you do your HSC, that your final score is determined by your ATAR. So the, the score is called the ATAR, the Australian T um, Tertiary Admissions Rank. And that's a score out of 99.95. That's the highest score. And even international students have got this score, which is just incredible um, to think that someone in their um, second language is beating so many other, other students in their, in their native language. 99.95 um, means, because it's a rank, it means that you're beating 99.95% of the population that did the test. So, you know, that's to be in the top 0.5% of the cohort is an incredible achieve achievement. And you're beating many um, native students and exceptional students um, from Australia as well. So international students uh, perform very, very well. Okay, um, I think um, that's all I wanted to go over here. I'm next gonna move on to this very important uh, sheet here. I'm gonna go back here, hang on a sec. I uh, just wanna share something. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Okay, so you can see this PowerPoint here. Um, as Mike went over before, um, there are some, uh, for the schools, there are some very um, useful websites as, as well. So either for public schools or private schools, this is a really big, um, these kind of uh, five websites that I've listed here are really essential uh, for learning about schools or in your own time, uh, looking at the large database of schools. Because when we're talking about schools in Australia, we're talking about over hundred, hundreds of schools um, to, to compare. Um, so these websites are really, really do a good job of comparing schools and looking up schools in a certain location. Um, and I'll get into these uh, details um, right, right now. So go to the first page here. One second. Okay. Okay, you can all see this page here. Let's see. Okay, great. Great. So this is a this is a website called um, the Schools Guide, um, and it's a yeah, it's a, an Australian website that has a database um, of every primary school and secondary school in Australia. All you have to do is type in the school name or the state or the suburb or the postcode, because a lot of you, when you get an inquiry, you someone will say, oh, hello, uh, hello, Bo, um, I want um, my son to go to Knox Grammar School. You might not know what that is. So you can learn, what, all you have to do is type in, I've, uh, I've, before I've, I've typed in the Knox Grammar School, so it will come up like this. You'll see Knox Grammar School, it's in New South Wales, it's in the Sydney Northern suburbs. It has um, about us. So the school is located in Warunga, which is in the Northern suburbs. It's a K to 12 school. So kindergarten to year 12, like I said, um, that's quite a unique school as well to have kindergarten all the way through to year 12. Um, it's, um, there's uh, no IB on offer and it accepts uh, international students as well. And a uniform is compulsory. You find in Australia, most schools, it is compulsory to, um, to wear a uniform. Um, it has school fees here, location. Um, yeah, so this is, um, this is really good um, resource um, to use. Then there's this. Then there's the schoolcompare.com.au uh, website as well. And this is really, really fantastic. I think if you've got time, um, you can take a look at this. So for, for those of you out there, you might get an inquiry um, that um, they might say, okay, look, I've got a, I've got a boy. Um, well, I've got a family moving to Australia. They've got a boy um, about 13 years old um, and they want to go to Australia. That's all you're given. So you can type into this website here. Um, there's got four stages. So let, let's look at this. So let's say I'm a, I'm a male. I want to go into year seven. 
and I want to go to school in Australia. Let's go. Let's go next. Okay. So then you can put in some really detailed information. If you're looking for um, a boarding school, you're looking for maybe maybe you're looking for a co-educational school. Maybe some parents they're not confident with an all boys school. So let's go with a co-ed school. Let's take this away. Um, then you can you can check all of these uh, kind of uh, this this information about about the school um, to your liking. Then you can check the the, the location. Okay, um, my client uh, wants a co-educational school. They want to be in New South Wales, um, and they're looking for a school from year seven to year twelve. So I've checked all of this, or it could be from kindergarten all the way to year twelve. I could do the same as well. Um, so yeah, let's do this next. Okay, what programs do I want? I'm looking for a school that's good at sport, looking for a school that's good at debating, because you'll, you'll get these questions. They'll say to you, um, I want a school that's really good at sport. I want a school that's really good at music. Okay, let's check music. Let's check um, creative arts. Let's see this. Okay, that's good. Um, maybe religion. Maybe a lot of international students don't really care. So let's not check that one. STEM. STEM is really important. So let's check this one. Facilities, so um, let's check uh, tennis courts, uh, multi-purpose sporting courts, heated pool. Yeah, let's check that one. Library, gymnasium, um, let's submit. Let's see what we get. Please wait. Okay, what do we get? Okay, so we've found 20 schools for you based on all of that information that I put in. There's, there's 20 schools. So you can see the full profile of the school here. So you can see this school, Mariah College. Um, no boarding, it's in Bondi Junction. Uh, it's a co-educational school, it's a Jewish school. Um, then there's Kinross Wallaroy, it's in Orange, which is a, a country town in Australia. The Armadale School, another country town. Um, and so on, scroll right for more, let's see more. Oh, is it working? Should work. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's it. Um, then there's George's River School, um, and it's got it's got the fees as well. Uh, but these these um, these are the public uh, these are the um, local tuition fees. So just bear in mind of that. But I'm showing you this because it's it shows the database um, really well. Hills Grammar School, which can accept international students and is co-educational. This is quite a popular school. This one I really do um, recommend. So yeah, this is another good website. Then there's this school, uh, this website here, Better Education. This is one that I use all the time. Um, this is a really good one to show the ranking. Um, a lot of you um, may ask about rankings for, for schools in Australia, but this is a really good one for, for ranking um, because parents um, really do care about that. So what you can do, um, on the far left here, it's got a tab um, where you can check uh, the school rankings. Um, then you can look at uh, the secondary uh, option. And most uh, international students are looking for secondary schools. Uh, then you can look at New South Wales. And then, then as well, you can compare schools. So I, what I've done, I've gone ahead and I've looked at some popular schools in New South Wales to compare. So I've got some um, public schools and I've selected so I selected James Cook Boys High School I've selected Cogra High School um, Sydney Secondary College the King School and Meriden so I've got some private schools got some public schools let's compare great so here are the five schools so it's straight away you know a lot of you you'll get these inquiries they, they might say to you look I'm interested in these five schools right um, so they might ask you tell me more about them tell me their location um, so, so this is it. So you can put, um, you can put these schools, um, in the website and then you can see how they're, they're rated against each other. So you can see Meriden school, the King school, they are two of the top private schools in, not only in Sydney, but in Australia. Um, they score 99, um, overall, that's some, that's one of the highest rankings for better education that you can get. And that's based on their English performance and mathematics performance, um, in, uh, in the high school certificate. Um, Meriden's in Strathfield, uh, which is not far from the city, and this, the King School is a boarding school uh, in North Parramatta. So that's, um, that's also a really good option um, as, as well. 
Then going down, we've got the state school. Sydney Secondary College is a state school um, in Roselle, which is not far from um, not far from the city. That that does well as well. Uh, Ninety three is quite a quite a good score. Um, does very well for mathematics. And then further down the list, you've got James Cook Boys and Cogra High, which are scoring seventy seven and seventy six respectively, um, which are quite, I'd say, mid-range, mid-range school. Um, they do, um, resources are quite good. Um, they do a good job. School fees are, um, are low. So the, the price quality ratio is quite good there. So this is another good website um, to use as well. Oops, let's look at this. Okay, then there's this one. This is the last one I'll show. For, uh, for for schools website, this one's a this one I really like because this one um, this is the quickest one for searching a suburb. This is another one um, that you will get um, as as well. They um, parents may say to you, "Look, um, I want to move to Burwood in in Australia, which is a suburb in Sydney," or they'll say, "I want to move to Cabramatta, which is a, a popular suburb for Vietnamese students," or "I want to move to St Albans." Um, which is a suburb of Melbourne, which is popular for Vietnamese and Cambodians. Um, so, that, so a lot of you, will, they'll, the, the parents will say, they'll tell you the suburb because they know maybe they've got family there or maybe they're migrating there. So this is a really good one as well. So let's type in, let's type in Burwood and then you can select the radius as well. So let's look at schools within um, a 10 kilometer radius. Let's do that. We don't even have to put in the school name. We can just say Burwood. Um, you don't even have to say anything else. So let's go. Let's do this one. Great. So it comes up with, um, there's two Burwoods. So there's one Burwood in New South Wales. There's one Burwood in Victoria. So we can click on this. All right. So we've got, <laughs> these are the schools that we've got. So All Saints Grammar. Um, Parambina School, Dane Bank School, Dom Raymond College, which is a five doc, uh, Catholic secondary school for girls, Hurstville Adventist, MLC, which is in Bowood itself. Um, so this is, this is a, another really good one um, as well. And it's come up, you can even refine your results here on the left, because um, it, it gives you all of the schools. So you can you're looking for a government school, Catholic school, independent school, primary, secondary, combined, co-ed, girls, boys, uh, boarding school. So let's look at boarding school. So these are the boarding schools. Um, Newington. Uh, Bob, sorry to disrupt, Bob. We can't see your yeah. screen. Can you share the screen, please? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, sorry. Share right. it again. Thank you. Not sure what happened. Okay. Can you see now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll just go through that again. So, how long did it cut out? Did it just cut out then? It's about two two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So um, this is the website. It's called Australian Schools Directory. Let's put in um, Burwood. Uh, let's go within a two kilometer radius. Go. <clears throat> this one's as I'll repeat again. This one's really good um, if your clients are just giving you a, a suburb name and they're asking you to come up with some schools. So yeah, um, you can see here, these are the results. It's returned 26 results. Um, there's, so therefore there's 26 schools within a two kilometer radius of Burwood. And then again, you can, you can refine your results. So let's look at, um, maybe you're more interested in independent schools. So here are the ones that you can look at. Um, I, mentioned, um, I mentioned Meriden before, uh, which is a good uh, student, uh, which is a really good school. MLC, also fantastic school for girls. It's funny, there's a lot of good school, uh, girls' schools in this, in this area, actually. Um, St. Patrick's, Stratfield, Trinity Grammar. Um, so yeah, you can look at, um, you can look at any, any suburb that, that you like. And I, I, I like to use this one um, just to really quickly find um, the schools within uh, a certain radius as well. So, um, then there's, um, let's, let's go back. Let's go back um, to my PowerPoint here. Okay, one second. 
Let's go back. Okay. Okay, so we've gone through the websites. Um, I'll go through the AEAS website uh, really soon. So um, public schools, um, public schools, as I mentioned before, um, they're split into six states and two territories. So here are the states, uh, the most popular ones um, being New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, um, then followed by South Australia, Tasmania, West Australia, um, Australian Capital Territory, um, which is where Canberra is the capital, and Northern Territory Government School. So the two territories at the bottom. Okay, um, so I've just gone through uh, the, the most popular school. So just straight away, you can see um, the school fees. So um, New South Wales uh, Government Schools, they ask for a $290 application fee. Um, and this must be produced at the time of application. So when uh, you fill out the application form, um, this must be submitted um, and it is uh, non-refundable uh, as well. Then, uh, so the main thing you wanna know, you wanna know how much are the school fees. Uh, in New South Wales, it's between uh, 13,400 uh, and 16,600. Why is there a gap? Uh, what is the difference? The gap is because um, it is determined by what age group, what year group um, you are studying. So if you're studying kindergarten, uh, you start kindergarten at New South Wales Government Schools, that would be 13,400. That's the cheapest option. Then the most expensive is a senior high school, which is year 11 and 12. That is 16,600 Australian dollars. That I'm telling you, that is a really cheap price for high school. If you compare that with US, if you compare that with Canada, if you compare that um, with UK, that is very cheap. Only New Zealand will be that price. New Zealand uh, is a little bit cheaper than that. But um, for Australia, and I, I just talked about how high quality um, New South Wales government schools are. That's honestly, it's almost a steal how, how cheap that is. Um, yes, so that's 16,600 per year once you get to uh, year 11 and 12. Um, I've mentioned the homestay as well. Um, homestay uh, is an option um, for students, um, of course, in, when, they, when they study uh, government schools or pr private schools in Australia. But parents that cannot go, um, they, they can elect to do homestay and that's uh, $350 per week. Um, there are other fees associated with that uh, as well. Um, there's another $350 processing fee um, once you do that, but every week, uh, it's $350. And then now there's an extra $20 fee associated with the check. Um, a representative from New South Wales government, government schools will do a check uh, every week to ensure everything's going okay. This is new legislation um, and from, from New South Wales. So they'll be doing checks as well. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, then there's also the English, uh, English Centre. Uh, the English Centre is for those students uh, that don't uh, meet the the English requirement. So uh, you don't need to, uh, as I'll mention later on, uh, you don't need to do an IELTS or a TOEFL or AES for public schools in Australia. You can simply go to Australia and do uh, two terms, uh, which is around 20 weeks of English language preparation. And for New South Wales, it's 8,900 um, for two terms, 20 weeks. So that's pretty good as, as well. Um, and that will be done um, at a school um, it can be done on campus. Uh, some schools have it on campus, some schools have it off campus. Um, so yeah, if you want one that's more convenient, that's on campus, you can let me know. I'll let you know what schools have that. Um, Victoria, their application fee is slightly expensive, 292, um, and their fees are slightly expensive, a little bit cheaper for kindergarten. Kindergarten is 12,218 uh, Australian dollars per year, and, you, uh, and for year 12, it's 18,000. Uh, 163. Um, I'll also, also mention as well, it's also very uh, cheaper as well because the Australian dollar in the last year has gone down quite significantly. Um, you, can, you can check that. Um, so it's all, so all of a sudden for, um, for international students, it's become a whole lot cheaper than it, than it used to be. So just um, still very, very attractive uh, to go to. Um, Victoria, the, the homestay is 370 per week. Uh, and the English Senate is 
uh, for 20 weeks. So you can see between New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland, there's not a whole big difference. You can just see Victoria is a little bit more expensive, $2,000 more expensive for, for year 12, year 11 and 12. Queensland is very similar to New South Wales. Um, and uh, just the home stays a little bit cheaper uh, and English Centre is, is roughly uh, the same as well. Um, homestay, um, there, there are a few things to know about that. Um, in most cases, um, homestay is, is only available um, after, after year seven. Um, if you're before year seven, it's deemed that the student is too young to do homestay. And I personally think it's too young as well. So before, um, before year seven, if, you're, if, you're, if you have a student uh, that wants to go to Australia before year seven, most likely and most sensibly, it should be the parents or a family member um, looking after the student. Um, but after year seven, it is, uh, you can elect to choose a homestay. For New South Wales, they're a little bit more strict. Um, they will only allow homestay after year nine. So from year nine, year 10, year 11, year 12, homestay is available and not before that. So the intake dates, uh, these are really important. Um, yeah. Oh, not long, not long, not long. Yeah. You have a meeting? Okay, let me see. Oh yeah, no problem, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, no, I'll, I'll move back in there, yeah. Um, just one, one, one second. Yeah, so um, these intake dates, uh, term one, so I told you before, there's four t uh, intake dates uh, in, in Australia. That means students, international students can enter at any of these uh, terms um, with a few uh, exceptions. Um, the main intake for students coming from the, the Northern Hemisphere is usually term three, so early July. So in, for this year, it was the 13th of July um, starting date. Um, so you can start, in, so what international students usually do, they, for, for government schools, they usually don't do uh, IELTS. Um, they, can, they simply prefer to do 20 weeks of English preparation. Um, and then go, go to Australia once they finish um, their school in their home country. So for example, from Vietnam, you might finish, um, your, you might finish year nine uh, in July or June, um, and then go to Australia immediately, go, go straight away, then do 20 weeks of English. And by the time, um, for, uh, by term one, um, the following year, then you can start the main, the main course. Uh, so that's, that's kind of how it's split up um, each, each state has its different uh, in term, uh, intake dates. So there are a little bit, there are, there are a few differences between uh, the intake dates between the states, but, but quite, quite, quite similar. Um, and if you do have any uh, specific questions for those dates, please, please ask me, I'll, I'll give you those, uh, those these dates. Um, this is specific for, these dates that you can see are here are specific for um, uh, Victoria government schools. Um, some things to note uh, is that the application deadline uh, is usually 2.5 months um, before the intake date. So if you've got students that want to go to Australia, um, please make sure um, that, they, that the application goes in um, 2.5 months before the intake date. So if, you, if you're looking for a student that wants to start uh, in July uh, next year, we want to get that application in you know, around March, April, um, this time. Um, that way, just schools take a little bit longer for their, um, for their application. Uh, when you're dealing with students below 18 years old, there's a few more compliance uh, that has to, ha has to go into the application. When you, if you're thinking about homestay, um, if you're thinking about the English Language Centre, there's a lot of preparation that has to go um, into that. So please make sure that those applications go in um, at least 2.5 months and as I mentioned before too, um, the, the latest intake for year 11, or well, in general for high school in Australia, uh, is year 11 term two. No school, um, whether it be public um, or private, with a few exceptions, there are a few private schools that may accept after year 11 term two, um, but most of the schools uh, in Australia, they, the, the latest they'll accept is year 11 term two because um, the, the international students need time to prepare for their final examinations in year 12. So, you know, if you've got a student that's, um, you know, coming, uh, coming to Australia, 
um, you know, in year 12, there's just not enough time. If you think about it, there's just not enough time um, to, to prepare um, at all um, for, for the high school certificate or the other certificates in the other states. So in the best interest of the international student, um, they, they can start, you know, early term, term 11. Uh, to, uh, early year 11 term two, that would be the, the, the latest. And I'm telling you before, when they did allow international students to begin in year 12, it just wasn't successful. Um, you know, it doesn't, it takes time to really prepare um, and get used to the Australian academic uh, system. So yeah, there are a few private schools um, like Taylor's College, uh, which is um, you know, part of study group. They have their own uh, Taylor's High School. They have year 10, year 11 and 12, and they can accept students uh, directly into year 12 from, from overseas, but it's not, not recommended by me. Um, it, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to prepare, but that said, we can, we can help students do it, um, but it will be difficult uh, for sure. Next slide. So um, some of the, the entry requirements, um, just really, it's really simple um, for, for public schools. It's um, the academic, they look at the high school transcripts of your home country, uh, the last, uh, the two previous years. So if you're a student from Vietnam, you uh, will look at your GPA. Um, so each state is looking for a different uh, kind of GPA. New South Wales, they're looking for 75%, so 7.5 for Vietnam. Um, that's that's it. As long as you're, you know, average weighted across the different subjects, if you're getting around that 75% mark, um, you're good to go uh, for New South Wales government schools. Now, for Victoria in Queensland, why have I got 70% to 90%? That's quite a big, um, you know, a gap. That's quite a big range. The reason being, uh, Victoria. Um, they, um, they work differently to New South Wales. Uh, New South Wales across the board, doesn't matter what school you go to, um, they ask for 75%. But Victoria, they ask for 70 to 90%, depending on the school. So let me share with you another document. Um, just here. Yep. Okay. So you, you can see this list. This is the Victorian government schools capacity list. This is the Bible for Victoria government schools. This is um, one of the best uh, documents that we have that we can share to you, uh, where you can check all of the, the state government schools in Victoria. Look, on the far left side, we've got all of the schools. We've got Auburn High School, we've got Ashford High School, uh, Alkira High School, all the way down A to Z. Wodonga Senior Secondary College it goes all the way down there, right? You can see here, there are some academic requirements for the school because um, Victoria Government Schools are very popular. Uh, Ashwood's High School is a very, very popular uh, school for international students. So they raise the academic results to 80%. Students must have 80% academic results. This is really important for you to know. So. If there's nothing, you can see this school here, Bayswater Secondary College. If the student is getting around 70%, that would be fine because it's not mentioned. So the default is 70%, default 70, 70 to 75. Then if you're getting, um, if you want to go to a better high school like Ash, Ashwood, Auburn, you can all see here, there's 80%, 80%, 80%. Um, and some schools as well um, require uh, an interview. So you can see Auburn High School um, requires an interview test um, that the school needs um, before an offer is made. So the process is the application goes in, um, then they will let us know. They will let us know that the, sh this, uh, the school is interested in the student. They've met the basic requirements. So they've, they've got requirements above 80. Um, they don't need to have English requirements. Like I said, you can go in without an IELTS test or any other English um, proficiency test. And then you'll do the interview. Once the interview is conducted and once the student passes, then the student will be given the offer after that. So Victoria Government School is a little bit more complicated. Um, and I don't expect you all to, to memorize all of these. <laughs> I don't expect you to memorize all of these requirements. Um, so please ask me. Um, that's why I'm here. Ask me anytime. Ask me, okay, Bo, um, I want to know the requirements of um, Bayswater Secondary or Belmont High School. 
there's also some uh, requirements to, to know like, um, uh, like Auburn High School does not accept year seven to year eight enrollments. They only take year nine and above. That's really important as well. So don't come to me, <laughs> or you can. Um, you know, if you come to me with a student that wants to study at Auburn High School um, and is you know ready for year seven, I'm sorry, we could not um, help this student. We have to, we're going to have to find another school because they can only accept year nine to year twelve uh, enrollments. Then they also say um, they can only accept uh, term one and term three intake only. So. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. The student can only um, enter the main course in term one um, or term three. They could start English at another time. They just have to time it right. Um, but, but term one and term three are, are the big intakes anyway. It's um, not often that we get students um, wanting to enter in term uh, two or, or term four. So yeah, this is a, um, I'll send this over. Um, this is the latest, uh, this was sent out on the 11th of March. Um, and this is the latest uh, capacity list. So yeah, this will tell you um, as well if there's no places available as well. So it'll say, for example, this Hume Central Secondary College uh, for 2020, it had limited places in year 11. Um, some, it may say, yeah, limited places at all year levels. So it's important to, have a look at this and see if your student um, can get in. So then um, this is the one for New South Wales, which is very simple. This is much more simplistic than uh, Victoria government schools. Um, this year has all of the New South Wales government schools available um, from Alexandria Park. It, it's really good. It shows you the region um, in Sydney, so it narrows it down for you. Um, Blacktown Boys High School, popular school in Western Sydney. And then it will say the capacity. So Arthur Phillip High School in Western Sydney has capacity in all year levels. That means um, that um, there's, there's room for, there's, there's availability for all year levels. Um, some may say capacity in year eight to year 11. That means there's no capacity in year seven. So it's important to look at this. Uh, this one here is popular. This one's in Newcastle. This one says capacity in year 11. So there's no room for any other year. So yeah, this is a really good guide as well that I, that I can send to you. And at the bottom of this, there's also primary schools as well. Um, New South Wales only recently started accepting students for primary schools. Um, and they really want to promote this as well. So if you've got a student that is would like to study at primary schools in, in Australia. There's, there's, this, um, there's these schools. So not many, unfortunately. There's not a whole lot of primary schools to work with. Um, you know, there's something like, you know, five, 600, um, you know, up to a thousand primary schools in New South Wales, but they're only allowing for like 15 plus primary schools. Um, but yeah, they're, they're quite spread. So there's some in Eastern Sydney, there's some in North, there's some in the Southwest some in the inner west so this we've got something to work with um, and they're not bad schools i'll tell you that there's not um, they're not bad schools so as you can see here students enrolling in kindergarten to year four must um, reside with a parent or guardian um, that's really important and students enrolling from year five to year six may reside may reside with a parent or direct relative um, yeah so no homestay for primary school like i said Okay, let's, uh, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back here. Yeah, so, um, and it's a similar, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not allowed to share the, um, well, there's no PDF of the, the Queensland Government Schools Guide, um, and we're not allowed to share that. That's a confidential one. Um, but you can just ask me you know, for Queensland schools, so whether it be for uh, Brisbane, Gold Coast, Townsville, Cairns, Rockhampton, uh, they've got public schools available there. If you've, got, if you've got students that want to study in that area, please let me know. I'll, I'll help you with that um, and choose a school. Um, in fact, um, on, their, on their website, um, they have a really good Find My School page as well. So let's look at this. You can see this. Uh, this is the Queensland Government Schools EQI 
um, find a school page. So this is for public schools. So I've got on the right, um, there's a map of Brisbane. I've made the example of Brisbane. Um, you can put in your uh, you can put in your results here. You can you can search for a particular school name or a program. Um, but to make it easy, uh, and I think the most common one, people want to know the location. They want to know what schools are available in the location. So you can select Brisbane, um, or you can choose Gold Coast. I've selected Brisbane, and you can see the search results. Um, you've got Queensland State School. Um, and you can add it to your preference list. We've got Yoronga State High School, uh, Craigsley State High School, Springfield Central State High School, Balmoral State High School. Um, yeah, this is really good too for you know a full on list of all of the schools available. And you can check more details. So let's have a look. Uh, Cleveland State High School. Um, it's got a video. It's got. Um, the three reasons to, to study at uh, Cleveland State. It's got the principal's welcome, contact details. Um, yeah, it's really good. So year established 1868, it's one of the oldest schools in Brisbane, older than Australia, in fact, it goes beyond when Australia became a country. Um, then the number of students, um, yeah, contact details, like I said, the map, um, homestay is quite available in, Queen, uh, in Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland's quite a nice area. Cleveland is by, by the beach. Um, you can see the water right here. That's um, my auntie actually lives in this area in, in, in Brisbane. So it's quite, quite, a nice, um, quite a nice area, really good for English preparation as well. Yeah, so it's really, really comprehensive. Um, yeah, I really recommend you guys to, um, to have a look at this, to have a look at this one as well. I'll, let me put this, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I'll go back, okay. Okay, and like I said before, um, there's no, um, there are English requirements to enter the mainstream course. So that means if you go directly into, let's say year seven or year eight, year nine, year 10, year 11, you can get in directly, yes. Um, if you provide an IELTS test or a TOEFL test or AEAS. Um, so if, you, if, you, if your student doesn't want to do uh, English preparation, which not many do, um, usually it's in the student's best interest to do uh, English preparation. It's fantastic because the students um, can really get top support from um, teachers. And really for 20 weeks, they can really get to know um, the system. Um, they can get good support. Um, so I really recommend students just go directly into English preparation uh, as well. Um, you, you can also get extra commission as well. So if the student does uh, English preparation um, for 20 weeks, that's one commission, and then you get another commission for mainstream course as well. So it's good for everyone um, to do uh, English prep. But if not, if students want to go in directly, um, the IELTS requirement is uh, 5.0 for year 7 to year 10, and for year 11, it's 5.5. So that's, uh, that's something important. <clears throat> so uh, the application procedure, like Mike said before, um, you know, for schools, uh, it's usually, yeah, sometimes there's online application or paper application. Usually we'll give you the, the paper or PDF uh, application. Um, for the schools um, and then after you submit the application there could be an interview um, then after that um, you will receive uh, an offer uh, then pay the deposit uh, then receive the COE then apply for the student visa then arrive in Australia Mike's explained that uh, specific to schools generally uh, yeah it's complete the application form and um, and if they're doing homestay they would need to complete a homestay application form as well um, there's a few other forms that are specific for high schools as well. So there's a package that we'll send you. Um, evidence of English. Uh, and the big one is really pre previous two years high school report. Usually all of the government schools, the private schools, they ask for this. They like to know what's been happening in the past two years. So get this ready. Um, if you have a student uh, wanting to go to Australia for high school um, and uh, get it certified as well. Really important that it gets translated. Um, get it translated, get it certified, send it to me um, or Mike. We'll take a look at it. Um, and then if it's ready, if we, if, if we think it's good for, um, 
if we think it's for good, good, good for the school, um, we'll, um, we'll send the application to you. Um, also passport and birth certificate, um, also really important as well. So another, another thing that I touched on before is the, the private schools. Um, and it's hard to get into detail um, without knowing which school you want to go to because each, each school has their own different procedure. Each school is different. Uh, each school has um, their own kind of flavor, um, which is really cool. Um, you know, the school I went to in, in Sydney was, um, you know, famous for sport. Uh, it was famous for um, uh, public speaking uh, as well. And they kind of, yeah, really, um, they kind of really did well um, with, with that. Um, but maybe um, you don't want to go to a school that's good at sport. Maybe you want a school that's good at mathematics or you want to go to a school that's um, more famous for, um, you know, other extracurricular activities or academically. You just want a school that's academically very strong. Um, you know, all these schools are very different. And, um, you know, on some of those websites as well, like the Compare um, school website, um, that, um, that is available there. Or you can ask me, you can ask me um, what schools are famous for, for English or maths or, or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, please let, please let me know about that. Um, yeah, so, so private, a lot of people ask me about private schools and what's the difference between private and, and public. Um, mainly, um, you know, the difference is that uh, for application procedure, it has its own separate and independent process. Um, the schools act independently um, from each other. Um, they have their own um, standards. Uh, they have their own enrollments that they want to keep. Some schools like to keep their enrollments small, um, like maybe only 300 students, 400 students. Some international, uh, some schools want large enrollments. They want up to 1,000, 1,500. I think the largest um, is in is in Melbourne, um, and that's. Uh, that's around 1,500. Wesley, uh, Wesley, Wesley Grammar, that's around, yeah, around 2,000, because they have three campuses, so they have around 2,000 students. That's kind of as big as it gets. And it can be, private schools can be around three, three to 400 to 2,000. Um, another thing that's important for us um, to know is that not all private schools can accept international students. That's really important. So, you know, you might may come up to me and say, look, I've got a student that really wants to go to St. Joseph's College in Sydney, but this school does not accept international students. So there's nothing I can do. I, I can't get this, this student if they're an international student. However, if they are a, uh, a student, if you're a migration agent and you have students that have already got uh, temporary residence or permanent residence, um, that's different. Um, they would be able to, um, apply for that school, but we may not be eligible for commission. Uh, so that's important to know as well. So we would have to check with the school first. So if you have a, a, an Australian citizen or if you have a permanent resident um, that would like uh, assistance to apply for a certain private school in Australia, we can help. We just need to check whether we can get commission for that um, as, as well. So, um, so let us um, let us know what school and I will check whether we can get commission as well. If we cannot get commission, um, there has been cases in the past uh, like Queenwood, uh, Queenwood Grammar in Sydney uh, where they, we weren't eligible for commission, but I, could, I know the uh, registrar well, we can send an application, but we would have to ask for uh, an, like a, kind of like a, a fee. We, would, uh, we could ask a fee from uh, the uh, from the parents uh, to, to do it for them. Next, um, yeah, as I said, each, uh, each school has in individual entry requirements, um, which I will touch on very soon. Um, and school fees can be between, I think the cheapest, yeah, is around 20,000 Australian dollars to around 40,000 Australian dollars per year. So very big gap. And why the big gap? I think the main thing is the resources uh, the facilities uh, will be different. If you're going to a school that's around 40,000 Australian dollars per year, you're going to get world-class facilities. Very, I'm talking very good. Um, everything that a student could have, um, you know, it could be including meals, um, you know, support, um, you know, huge sporting facilities, uh, academic facilities, facilities, big libraries. And the one that's around 20,000 could be a bit more modest. It's, I'd still say it's very good, uh, but it would be, 
uh, would be a bit more modest um, for sure. Um, boarding as well, um, you know, boarding schools are available uh, for international students as well. And boarding schools are really great. I went to a boarding school. Uh, boarding schools really do teach you um, and, and help you kind of um, get along and integrate with the, with the cohort really well. When I went to the, um, to the boarding school, I felt like I really knew everyone in my grade very well, like very personally. Um, we all got along very well with each other um and still remain very good friends to this day so if you're thinking about you know it's best for my student to have good contacts and to really have a great integrated learning in australia with great long australian friendships i would recommend a boarding school um boarding schools um for boarding it's generally another twenty thousand. um i think the highest is around 22 21,000 australian dollars per year um quite right across the board uh, boarding is usually around another 21,000 or 20,000 Australian dollars. Um, and public schools do not have boarding. So there's no public school in Australia um, that has boarding. So uh, unfortunately, that um, they don't have that yet. Um, and it doesn't look like that will happen in the future anytime soon as well. Um, private schools, uh, they usually have larger uh, extracurricular programs, like I mentioned, um, like sport, arts, design. Um, of course, I mentioned public schools have this, but probably private schools have, have it a bit more better um, in terms of, um, I think the teachers have that more uh, industry experience. Um, like certainly in my school, all of the sporting coaches were, had experience with professional teams um, and were, were, were fantastic. Um, so um, you have to give the private schools credit um, for, for that. Succession rate is, a, is an interesting one um, that I get asked about a lot. Apparently, uh, private schools, it's generally higher, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, if you go to a private school, it doesn't mean you're gonna get into you know, the top universities as well. Um, you know, certainly public, the top public schools in Australia, they have higher, much higher succession rates. But aver on average, um, there's less private schools and generally private schools um, they do do well um, to get their students into university um, than the public schools because the public schools a lot of um, a lot of students as well um, or a lot of the local students anyway not the international students international students really do succeed uh, and move on to university but the local students may go and do vocational um, or like a vocational career um, so yeah they might may not go to university after that. Uh, private schools uh, usually have smaller class sizes, um, usually around 20, around 20 per class. In public schools, it might be 20 to 25 or up to even 30 sometimes. So be mindful of that. Um, it can even be smaller. Um, I, I'm talking um, for English or math, the most popular classes. So they would be around 20. Um, some of the classes I had, uh, were, there were only five students. Like for my economics class, there was around five students. Uh, my Japanese class had five, um, so it really does depend um, on what, what, what class you do. So it was really great for my economic class to have around five students. We really had that personalized learning um, for such a, a crucial subject. So that was really good. Um, most private schools in Australia are segregated into boys and girls schools. Um, there are private schools that, have internet, uh, that, have, uh, co, that are co-educational. Uh, which means boys and girls together. We call it co-ed school. Uh, so there are some, not many. Um, most of the private schools are boys and girls, whereas a lot of the public schools are co-ed. And uh, they, will, uh, they will say if they're uh, not co-ed by um, saying it's uh, a boys' school or a girls' school. So for example, um, Strathfield Girls High School or um, um, Epping Boys High School, they will have um, they will say the boy's name too, to indicate um, whether or not it is a boys or, or girls school. All right, so with, with private schools, um, one of the most important things to talk about after that is another entry examination, which is specific for, um, which is specific for public schools. So let's take a look at, at that. One second. Screen. 
Okay, you can see the, the AEAS. So this is unique. Uh, this is an examination for private schools in Australia. I'll say that again. This is unique for Australia uh, and for certain private schools in Australia. This is a test um, that may be required of international students. Um, this is, yeah, again, only for international students wanting to go to certain private schools in Australia, in particular in Melbourne and Sydney and some schools in Brisbane, Perth, Adelaide, but not, not many for those cities. It's mainly for schools in, uh, in Sydney and Melbourne. Um, so this is the, the AEAS test. Um, this is a, is a test um, that uh, is, an, is an assessment that does focus on English language proficiency. Uh, you can see here, uh, mathematics and nonverbal general ability. Uh, it's a test that uh, goes over three hours. Uh, and like I said, must be done by majority of the schools in, in Melbourne and Sydney. Um, and it's been it's been running for quite some some years now over 20 over 20 years um, and yeah it's is really important if you're going to go to the top top schools uh, in in Australia they break it up into segments uh, they have uh, they have a test for students applying for year four to year six they have a segment for students applying for year seven to year nine and another one for year ten uh, and year twelve um, as well. So yeah, they break it up into this. Uh, English language uh, goes, uh, there's uh, uh, vocabulary, spelling component, reading, comprehension, writing skills, uh, listening skills, speaking. Um, that's kind of what it's uh, broken up onto. Yeah, and you can see that here. Uh, mathematics, um, mathematics is, uh, Another another component. Uh, it's multiple uh, multiple choice, um, and it's it's generally done within uh, forty five minutes uh, as as well. Uh, the nonverbal is another multiple choice. Um, it's kind of like a reasoning test. I don't know if you've seen uh, these kind of uh, reasoning tests that, um, that that people do. You might have to discern the difference between certain objects. It's something that you really can't study for. It's something that's kind of naturally attained. Um, so, you know, another frequently asked question is, do, can students prepare for this test? Yes, there are centers that help students prepare for this test, but it's really, the schools don't really want you to prepare. They really want to know what's your level right now. They want, they want to know that. So you can see test preparation here. Um, you know, AAS recommends that the student focus on their English language studies. Uh, and their general school studies as the most effective means of preparing for the test. So they don't say, you know, look at past papers or, you know, look at stuff like this. They really just want you to know, um, they really want to know how you are right now and what kind of support do you need um, when you're going to go um, study in Australia. So it's a, so regist registering for the test uh, is quite simple. Uh, you go on the website here, um, the AES uh, website page, um, and it's available in a, in a lot of countries. So you can see here in Australia, if you have onshore student in Australia, um, Cambodia. Uh, in Cambodia, they have tests in Phnom Penh. In China, they have tests everywhere. Beijing to Xi'an. They have, and even in Shanghai and Beijing, they do tests twice a week. Let's see, um, yeah, Hong Kong as well, where's Malaysia? Um, Malaysia, um, they have a testing center um, with ET and AUG in Subang Jaya. Um, and you can, yeah, you can book the test um, here. I'll register for the test first and they have um, the test available at these dates. Uh, it has been suspended. Um, yeah, you can see these dates here for, for, for this year. So quite clear. Um, what else can I show? Vietnam, that's a good one. Um, Vietnam, they have um, these, uh, these dates here. So January, um, February, March, April, they go throughout the year, twice a year in Ho Chi Minh City, uh, twice a month, sorry, in Ho Chi Minh City, and twice, only once a month in Hanoi.
So you can see, you can see here, 2020. So it's, um, yeah, registered for the test uh, here. It costs uh, 520 Australian do dollars um, for the test. You can do the test um, as many times as you need, but really they recommend you do it once. Um, and once you, once you do do the test, um, then uh, they will have, uh, then we can send it to the school and then the school will decide um, whether they will accept you or not. It's really complicated this because each school doesn't explicitly say, uh, well, some schools explicitly say what, uh, what requirements they need. Like some might need 60. The, the, the test is out of 100, by the way. Let me, show, let me show you, I'm gonna show you an example of a report. Just give me one second here. Okay. Yeah, so it's for, for schools in Melbourne and Sydney, they kind of say, look, and it kind of depends on how competitive the, the application um, process is. Okay, um, I've got the student here, let me show you. Um, gonna share this. Great. So um, this, this is an AES report uh, from a student in Malaysia um, that applied to us. Um, just shows her, her details, which we won't, we won't show. Um, and then here, here we get to the assessment. So basically it comes down here, it says, this is the score that you get. So it, like I said, there were five components to the English assessment. Um, the maximum score is 20 out of 20. And this student got 16 out of 20 for reading, 12 out of 20 for vocab, 14 out of 20 for written essay, 13 out of 20 for listening, and 15 out of 20 for speaking. Quite a good score. She got 70 out of 100. Now, this is quite a good score. This is the score that you kind of want to get. If you get 70 out of 100, your options really do um, widen. Um, most schools will say, you know I, how I said they don't specifically have a requirement. Some schools may say yes, they have a special requirement for, okay, they might say year eight, I want 58 out of, at least 58 out of 100, okay. But some schools, they don't, they don't say. It really does depend on the competitiveness of the applications. Um, that will kind of determine um, and how many spots they have available. But if you're getting 70 out of 100, um, you're doing better than most. Um, and you, you'll make sure that you, you at least get into a, a really good school. Um, some schools, like I mentioned before, like, like Kings uh, or Meriden, uh, you probably want to get about 75 and above. Kings, maybe even 80. Um, I think, I think after, after coronavirus, they are going to reassess all of their, their requirements. So that's why I'm not really going to tell you today what all of the requirements are for each school. Um, it, I'm, I'm talking with a lot of the schools now to find out what their requirements are for next year and I'm compiling a list and I will send that to you um, very soon as well. But at the moment, if you're getting around 70, you're, you're pretty good to go to, to any, any good school. Um, but having said that, in the future, the, that requirement may go down. I think a lot of schools um, definitely got hit um, because of the coronavirus. Uh, a lot of schools will, will want more international students. So yeah, that's just the English assessment. Uh, and it's really good. Uh, they say, uh, they talk about the details of the, the student, what languages they speak at home, um, the summary of the English school. So it's more detailed than like, a, like an IELTS test. They really have a more personal report. So they'll say uh, her English schools range from a, uh, above average to average. Um, and they'll say, based on these test scores, Clarissa would benefit from a minimum of eight weeks of intensive English language program in Australia prior to commencing formal study. So most of the time, guys, if they're doing an AES and they have to, if they go into a good, good private school in Australia, you're gonna have to do English preparation anyway. Um, it's very rare to get in direct um, to uh, a private school in Australia. They'll always want you to do a, a bit of English language preparation. And like I said before, it's very essential um, and very beneficial for students doing uh, an English language um, preparation. It really is beneficial for the student. I'll always say it. 
Um, so with private schools, how they organize, um, some private schools may have their own English language center. Other private schools, they'll, they don't. So they want the private, they, they want the student to go to an external private uh, English preparation center. So some in Melbourne uh, might be Melbourne Language Center or Hawthorne English. Some in Brisbane might be Brown's English. I think some of you know some of the, the English preparation schools. So if you're not familiar with that, just let me know. With that. Um, but yeah, most of the time, um, even if, even if um, you know, they get a really, really high school, even if they get a really high score like this one, they'll still say eight weeks. And usually eight weeks is kind of the minimum um, that they give. That's not a long time. That's eight weeks is nothing, um, you know, less than two, two months. Um, and that's, that's for a good student. Yeah. So um, then, then it goes on to the uh, nonverbal general ability section. So this student did quite well um, in that. Uh, they got 38 out of 40, a Stanine of seven. If you're getting most uh, private schools, they want to see a Stanine, at least one Stanine in seven, and at least one Stanine in six. So this student got 11 out of 30. So quite low for maths, but it was still enough to get her through um, to the, her school of choosing because uh, she did quite well in English. There's a couple of other things it says, it talks about preferred school subjects, uh, talks about long-term goals, uh, interests, activities, stuff like that. Um, and then a final summary, which is really good. So the reason why, um, you know, it's essential or reason why some schools need AEAS is because it's a really good report that tells the registrar, it tells the student, uh, the, the teachers at the school, what kind of student this is, what kind of support do they need. So you can see here, because during the interview, Clarissa presented as quite polite and a shy student. She could convey information using complete sentences and a good range of vocabulary. Her fluency was reasonable with minimal hesitation. Clarissa's speech was easy and clear to follow. So it just it gives teachers um, that kind of perspective of what they need uh, to do to give the student more support um, while they're at school in Australia. So it's really good. Um, but yeah, the negative thing is, um, you know, not a lot of international students uh, like to do this test, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, if you want to go to a good school, um, this, is, this is all we can, uh, we can do. We can prepare you for this. Um, yeah, so yeah, um, that's, that's it for the um, the AEAS. Um, but like I said, there's some there's some private schools that don't need AEAS. Uh, you could go um, you could go in with just an IELTS test. Um, that would be acceptable, and it's usually uh, five point uh, five or five point zero five point zero for year seven to year ten, and five point five for year eleven. Um, and some schools um, may not need uh, that altogether as well. You just have to do English preparation, like public schools as well. But must say with private schools, it's quite rare. You, you will have to provide some kind of evidence of English before getting into a private school. They just have that extra requirement there. And I think it's good that they do that. It shouldn't be easy to get into private school and I'm sure you can all understand um, as, as well. I think, uh, yeah, I spent a lot of time on this and I think, I hope uh, you have enjoyed. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, so um, yeah, um, I think that's, that's it for me for now. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, you, can, you can put them in the box uh, and, and let me know. I'm more than happy to spend as, as long as it takes um, to go through some questions. I'm just mindful of everyone's time um, and I hope um, you know, I got through at least some basic uh, information about today's uh, session. And right now I'm just copying some of the websites that I used, I'm putting them in the box. So just putting in the AES website, how to register, I'm putting in the EQI uh, website as well. I'm putting in the Good Schools website as well. And feel, feel free to unmute yourself as well. If you, you prefer to unmute yourself, um, yeah, please, please go ahead and do so and um, ask any questions. I'm just still, there's the, just put in the uh, school compare guide. 
um, putting in better education. Yeah, uh, Jimmy, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of the schools will have uh, their school fees for private schools on, on their website, uh, all up to date for 2020 or 2021. Um, like I said, um, the school fees are around 20,000 to 40,000 Australian dollars per year. Um, but it does, it does depend on the school and, and the grade as well. So um, if just, just let me, yeah, you could just let me know what, what school you're looking for and I'll let you know what, what, what the fees are uh, for, for that. Oh, um, one thing I might actually share with you again um, is our uh, institution system. Um, so you might, you might be all aware that we have our, uh, uh, our institution list, and which has a list of all of the schools that we have uh, that we represent in, in Australia. So if you don't have this list, I can share this with you as well. And uh, here uh, you can choose the country. So Australia, uh, you can choose the state, you can choose the sector. So we're talking about schools today. Um, so we can see um, I've selected private schools and you can see all of the private schools that we represent. So you can see um, All Saints Ang Anglican, Ang Anglican School. It's a, it's a school in Queensland, um, in Brisbane. It's co-ed and it's boarding. So it's really good. We say here exactly what the school is, private, co-ed, day and boarding school. Then there's Alphington Grammar. It's a private co-ed day school. Um, and then this, it's all hyperlinked, so uh, you can click on this and it will open with the website as well. Uh, Billinger College, so yeah, we've got schools all over for pages and pages. Page two, page three. Yeah, we've got a, quite a big list. I'd say we've got one of the most um, competitive lists for high school in, in Australia. And you can see the territory is all global for private school. Private school um, is quite, quite good for any territory. So if you've got students from any country, um, it should not be a problem for, for where they're from. Um, what's going to be the main thing is making sure their GTE is good um, and making sure their financials are clear um, and easy for the school to see. And of course, once the visa goes in, that it's all... Uh, easy for the visa case officer to see um, and proving all of those financials are legitimate as well. So, yeah, I encourage you to, um, there's also, there could be a few schools not on this list that we can do. Um, we, may have, we may have accidentally missed some or we may have got a new school. Or we may have signed with a new school recently. Um, so, yeah, let, let me know. Um, maybe you saw a school that you want to send your student to. It's not on our list. Just let me know. Um, I think... Uh, I'll be able to tell you straight away if we can if we can do it or not. We may have just missed it on this list, but this is um, generally um, all of the schools that that we can do uh, for private schools. Then uh, there's government schools. You can see all of the government schools here, ACT to West Australia. Here, it's important that we do look at the territory because we don't have um, you know for Victoria, for New South Wales, ACT, West Australia, we don't have. Uh, territory for every country so um, you know if you're for example for New South Wales we can't unfortunately do um, Vietnam right now uh, we will be getting that territory back uh, very soon I hope I'm working on that and then uh, Victoria we can uh, most most uh, most countries we can for Victoria West Australia there should be Vietnam as well we can for Vietnam um, main thing really is uh, New South Wales we cannot for Vietnam uh, we can for Malaysia, we can for Indonesia, and for China, that's no problem, but just not for Vietnam. Um, we reopened our office here in November last year, so it takes some time um, to get the territory back. Um, Tasmania, South Australia, Queensland, they're pretty good for territory. Uh, as you can see, it's global. Um, we should be able to do any country um, for that. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, still, um, yeah, if there's some, um, I think that that's it for me. Um, if anyone has any more questions, um, please, uh, let me know. Um, be happy to any, any, to have, be happy to answer any questions that, that you have. Uh, and it's really good to see a lot of, uh, 
lot of people here listening today. Um, you know, we really, um, we really do um, appreciate all of your support. Um, we know it's a tough time um, for everybody in uh, this industry, uh, but we're still working hard and um, we know it will pick up soon. Um, you know, if you do have applications for, for schools, I do recommend that you send them in. Um, we, can, we can at least go for the, uh, get the offers ready. Um, and then um, we just have to wait for the Australian border to open. Unfortunately, um, the Australian border is not open yet. So we, you know, um, students cannot go. So, if, you know, maybe students are ready to go in July this year. We don't know if it will be open by then. It's already mid-May and it's really unlikely that, <laughs> um, you know, there's enough, there's enough time to apply. We, we do have a few students that already got offer for this time. So they might be ready to go when the border opens, but it's looking that it won't, it won't be ready. Um, you know, there's talk that they will open the border just for international students, but um, I wouldn't be too uh, optimistic. Um, we, we do have to put the students' uh, health at, um, you know, that, that has to be considered above all. So, you know, I, unless the government has the 100% confidence that the students will be safe, then they shouldn't go. So they, they have to be, the government has to be really, really sure that there's no problem before students go. Um, you know, it would be a disaster if an international student went and then they got corona in Australia. But that wouldn't be acceptable, would it? So, yeah, Australia is doing the right thing to make sure that it's safe. But I'm, I'm very happy that Australia has done well compared to other countries, um, compared to UK, Canada, Australia, uh, US. Uh, they've performed exceptionally well. New Zealand as well. New Zealand has done very well. We also have a lot of schools in New Zealand as well. So if you have schools, um, if you have students that want to study in New Zealand, please let me know. We have a whole um, range of um, have a whole range of schools as well for for New Zealand. Um, yeah, I think. Were there any other questions? I'm going through now. Good to see a lot of people here. Um, yeah, just that I I had missed that share the screen. So yeah, Jimmy, I sh I have uh, shared uh, all of those links above. Am I missing any? There's the EQI. There's the good schools. There's the Australian schools. Um, I think I've got everything there. I'll put in this one as well. This is the New South Wales. Uh, government school find a school page that's also really good for um, finding schools in Australia as well and uh, yeah I think I've got everything here yeah any questions guys any questions don't be afraid um, we can ask any questions that we like um, yeah just to just to, just to summarize um, you know, schools in Australia, I, I've got to say, across the board, are fantastic places to study. Um, you know, they've, they've created incredible talent. Um, they, they provide exceptional support. They give a lot of confidence to students. They really help students find what they want uh, to study in life, which I think is really important. You know, um, a lot of students throughout high school, they still don't know what they want to do. And of course, that's quite normal as well. But I think in Australia, they really do try to help you hone on what your, uh, what your interests are, what you like, um, and uh, that, that's, that's a great benefit for, for students um, as, as well. Um, yeah, if you don't have any questions now, please just get in touch with me in uh, your respective uh, group chat. Um, you, you might ask me about school fees or entry requirements again, um, anything like that, you can just, you can just let me know. And, uh, and I'll, I'll point you in the right direction. Or if you need me to help your student prepare for, um, for interviews or things like that, I'm more than happy to help your student prepare for interview. I, I do that. Uh, I've done that before um, as, as well. Um, you know, if, you, if your students need any help or support in any way, I'm happy to help. And like I said, um, if you need help looking for any school, there's so many schools to choose from, um, just give me a little, uh, background of your student. Let me know how their GPA is. Let me know their interests. Uh, let me know what uh, grade they are. Let me know if they want to go into a boys' school or a girls' school or a co-ed school. Let me know all of those details. 
um, and then um, then I'll, I'll let you know. I'll point you in the right direction. So um, yeah, more than happy to help. And once again, thank you for all of your your support. And um, let's keep working hard uh, during this time of uh, of pandemic. It's all difficult for us, and let's uh, um, let's go ahead and um, work hard together. All right, that's it from me. Um, thank you very much and hope you have a good rest of the day and we stay in touch, okay? Um, and if, if um, that's it, I'll say bye for now. Thank you.